Hi, my name is Vincent Adam. I'm going to present you my paper, Dual Parameterization of Sparse Rational Gaussian Processes. This is joint work with Paul Chang, Mohamed M. Tiaskan, and Arno Solin. So I'll start with the take-home message, which is we work with sparse variational Gaussian processes, which is the current workhorse, workhorse of Gaussian process models. Uh, this is so because as a variational algorithm, it turns inference as an optimization. Therefore, um, it leads to algorithms that are faster than sampling-based algorithms and also can borrow a lot from the field of optimization. And most importantly, as in sparsity, changes the computational bottleneck that normally uh, leads to computations that scales cubically with a number of data points to a lower complexity by introducing inducing points, m of them, m smaller than n, leading to a complexity that scales cubically with a number of inducing points and linearly with a number of data points. We improve on existing algorithm for a sparse rational Gaussian process by exploiting a dual parameterization and that leads to speed up in both inference and learning. So our dual parameterization leads to a tighter bound for learning. When we turn uh, inference and op as optimization, we typically maximize a lower bound to an objective, the marginal likelihood. And the tighter this lower bound, the best you're going to go uh, optimizing it. In uh, yeah, I'm going to start this slide again. I'll start with the take home message. The dual parameterization leads to a tighter bound for learning. Um, rational inference turn inference in an optimization, and it's an optimization of a lower bound to the marginal likelihood. The tighter this lower bound, the best the learning is going to be. And we show that we get a tighter bound. Here, our algorithms that we're going to refer to as TSVGP uh, has a tighter lower bound than um, alternatives that we're going to call QSVGP. This tighter lower bound leads to better learning algorithm. Better in terms of the step you make in your learning, you make bigger steps, and so you reach your optimum faster. And also in terms of speed, each of the steps depicted here are faster in our case. I'm going to now review quickly caution process regression. Um, caution process regression is a, reg is a regression algorithm where you go from input xi to data yi under the assumption that uh, y relates to x through the nonlinear function f that is unknown, plus corrupted by some noise. And in Gaussian process regression, you make the assumption that f uh, is, a, is a priori distributed like a Gaussian process, parameterized by a mean function and a covariance function. This covariance function specifies properties of the function in the distribution, a priori distribution. For example, as in this image, many samples of this distribution have typically the same magnitude, it li lies with, within the same bounds, and the same typical smoothness, making a couple of oscillation within this window. When you then do uh, inference under this assumption, you get a pos posterior prediction where the posterior samples um, are close to the data and interpolate in between with increasing uncertainty in between the data points and uh, higher uncertainty also as it extrapolates outside of the range of data points. So sparse GPs is um, a set of algorithms that uh, replace the n observations of the function uh, at the data point by m pseudo observation of the same function at uh, a set of inducing points z. So the idea is to uh, compress the information uh, provided by the many blue here data points into a smaller set of uh, data points, pseudo data points, the red one. And the idea is you introduce a pseudo observation model, so pseudo likelihood as well. And in the end, you just do inference the same way, except that now your regression problem is a regression on a smaller set of data points, uh, m of them. That's what explains the scaling, the favorable scaling m cubed rather than uh, n cubed. 
In a nutshell, um, the posterior prediction looks as follows. So you have a variational distribution, QU, on the inducing variable, so the function evaluation at this inducing point, Fz, that summarize uh, the data that is redundant in many ways. And then to predict at new points, you integrate this distribution over uh, the inducing variable through the conditional distribution to predict p of f somewhere given the value of uh, the function at this inducing point inputs. And that gives you your approximated posterior process. Uh, how do we, so we have this distribution QU that is left to specify and, and to learn. And this is done uh, in version inference by maximizing uh, what is called the elbow. It's a lower bound to the marginal likelihood. And it can be expressed as a function of this uh, Q distribution. It typically has two terms. The first term is expected log likelihood and the second term is a Kyle divergence between this distribution QU and the uh, prior distribution PU. And I write this bound LQ. So once we have this bound LQ, uh, we are going to optimize it. And so here I introduce some notation. L depends on Q and it's the chosen parameterization of it, which we'll, I will discuss later. But it also depends on the model parameter, for example, these length scales and variance of the kernel I mentioned. So um, how do we do hyperparameter selection? We can do so by ma maximizing the marginal likelihood or the log of it, log p property of the data. And uh, it is common to approximate this by actually maximizing instead the lower bound um, that I introduced. A typical way to do that is via the expectation maximization uh, algorithm which perform coordinate ascents on this function of the two variables, the variational parameter and the kernel hyperparameter. So first in the E step, the hyperparameter are fixed and the variational uh, parameter are maximized. And then in the M step, uh, the reverse is true. The uh, variational parameter are fixed and uh, the elbow is maximized with respect to the uh, hyperparameters. So now I'm gonna introduce which parameterization we choose. So as a reminder, this is the uh, posterior process for a uh, sparse Gaussian process. And it, it has, it contains this distribution QU over the inducing variable. And in the classic parameterization, the QSVGP to which we compare, this is directly parameterized by its uh, moment. So the mean and the covariance or Scholes key factor of the covariance. Instead, we use uh, a dual parameterization, which splits this distribution into two factors. The first one is inherited from the prior. It's actually the prior, a prior distribution over this uh, inducing variable. And then a factor, uh, TU, that I will describe in the next slide. This is very reminiscent of expectation propagation, where this is a chosen uh, factorization of an approximation to the joint distribution over um, latent variable and data, but this is different in many ways as well. So this dual parameterization going further can be split in two terms. One is the prior distribution. So it's a Gaussian with covariance specified by the kernel. And the second one are terms that depend on uh, one term per, per data point that takes a specific specific form. So the if you take this product, the prior times our sites, um, we end up with a Gaussian and which has mean and and covariance that can be rewritten uh, in a way that allows to understand this dual parameterization. So if you look on the right, the precision, so the inverse of the covariance can be expressed as a prior precision, the inverse of the covariance, uh, kernel covariance matrix, plus some terms that depend on the data. So the contribution of the data arrives uh, through a sum of outer products. So this vector AI are um, vector product and so AI, AI transpose is a rank one matrix. And for the uh, first order term, it's also a sum. You should think of this as the natural parameter of this parameterization. So as I showed, it's a sum and I showed you have N parameters. So maybe when you reach large, uh, very large data sets, it's not very convenient. 
And uh, what we do is we can also decide to store and cache the full sum. Then we go down to a storage complexity that scales with the number of uh, inducing point m squared. And this is, then we really reach the storage complexity of classic uh, SVGP while also preserving the advantage I've described. So I presented the EM algorithm. Maybe now this will make more sense. I described in the M step when we freeze the uh, variational parameter and then do a, a step of optimization of the hyperparameter. Uh, the objective we get for our parameterization in blue uh, leads to a tighter bound, which uh, explains why we then can do bigger steps in our optimization. And um, finally, a second advantage that our method has is that we can do also a better E step, which is the inference. So natural gradient, natural gradient descent is an optimization technique that is aware of the geometry of the distribution and it is independent of the choice of parameterization. So it would be the same for uh, the previous QSVG parameterization and now parameterization. Natural gradient can actually be written, natural gradient descent can be written as mirror descent, which is a connection that was established recently. And um, mirror descent looks like this. It's actually uh, minimizing a linearization of the loss penalized by a KL divergence. A particular, uh, this is this independent of the parameterization. And if we actually choose a particular parameterization, which is the expectation parameterization, it turns out that it gives update directly in terms of our um, dual parameterization. And these updates are very cheap. So this is against common knowledge that it is difficult to work with the uh, dual parameterization. It was actually established in the past that it's not, uh, the loss is not a convex objective of the um, dual parameterization, but natural gradient descent, uh, which is independent of the uh, uh, parameterization is well established and is actually extremely simple in our parameterization. Uh, as a snapshot, classic um, QSVGP with natural gradient descent requires a lot of operation. So it requires computing this first expected log likelihood, some extra KL, many, um, Gaussian transformation and additional gradients. And our algorithm instead compute a smaller quantity and then uh, a single gradient step leads to the update. So it looks uh, longer on the left and it's actually much slower as well. And uh, we can show that uh, on MNIST experiment using mini batch because we can also mini batch, uh, we both uh, have a better um, trajectory and a faster one which summarize uh, the two advantages that I described earlier. We also benchmark this, so using mini batching on various UCI data sets. And in every case, we see some improvement from previous method. So as a summary, we improve of previously established uh, SVGP method by showing that dual parameterization leads to a better objective for learning the kernel hyperparameter and as part of the learning, we need to do inference. And we can also do that faster uh, using a particular, um, a particular instantiation of natural gradient descent. Thank you for your attention.